In today's video, we're gonna react to more TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. We have video games that exist. One is called No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky was created by like 14 college kids on one DVD. It has 80 quadrillion planets. The game never ends. And unlimited numbers of life forms as they travel throughout this game. Life forms evolve and come into existence. There's a universe on one DVD. What happens if you put AI on that software? Then those beings become conscious and those animals become conscious. Another game that exists, The Sims. The Sims are people that have jobs go to work, have babies, go to parties, hang out and all this kind of stuff. That's the video game. They're talking about putting AI into The Sims. They're going to become conscious. Now, what happens in The Sims and this other game, No Man's Sky, when these people become conscious from the AI and then write their own programs inside the program and create another conscious universe? The universe could be many, many layers deep. And that's just a hypothesis. What I'm saying is we may not be in base reality, being that we could have been created by an ancestor of another universe. Hey, this is really interesting. I am a bit of a gamer myself. I really enjoyed No Man's Sky, you know, a year or two after it released and it actually was a more perfected game. If you've never played it, I highly recommend it. It's amazing. Uh, I also really enjoyed The Sims. I personally would love to have AI implemented into those games because I would like the world to feel more alive. I personally do not believe AI as being artificial intelligence. It's not a living intelligence. It's just a program code that's been created to manipulate itself to be more realistic. It's still not real. And it doesn't really have a conscious, at least to my understanding. So I don't really believe that AI will become conscious in video games. I just think that it's advanced intelligence and it's not artificial intelligence as far as having a conscious. It's just advanced. That's all it is. So as far as that being said, what do you guys think of AI? You, do you like to call it artificial intelligence or do you fall in the line of it being advanced intelligence? Because it's really not a self-thinking software or program. It's kind of programmed to think the way it thinks, so that's not really intelligent at all. Right, let's get this straight right now, right? Why has nobody told me that this thing right here is real? Explain that to me. Explain that to me. And it, it doesn't stop there. No, here's another one. Look at that. Clear. Clearly a woman. Clearly a woman. Don't even know. What, how, how is that thing? Explain that. It's not a natural form. And then here's another one. Just a guy, just a dude, sat there, little penguin for you. Then a little bird, kissing another bigger bird. Some sort of goat, not quite sure. Defo a snake, defo a snake. There's two snakes, two snakes on top of each other. Then I've no idea what that is, but if they're not teeth, I don't know what are. Defo a little dinosaur. And then a hand. What is going on, people? I mean, look at the, check this out, right? Just look at this for a second and you just, you tell me what this could be. Hmm? I mean, I'm not sure about that one. Looks sus. It's a bit sus too. That's defo a person, that though. I'm not even bothered. When did this become a thing? Interesting. I have recently, and I know this is going to sound really bad, but I have recently learnt about Sodom and Gomorrah, and it, I find it really interesting to, to take this theory into account. If giants of all different types existed back in the past, elephants, snakes, people, things like that, I always question, you know, well, if it was a, an elephant that big, why does it look like it's standing up? Why did the elephant just die and petrify standing up? Well, learning about Sodom and Gomorrah, the biblical stories, it makes more sense that everything in the world was just instantly petrified. And as time progressed, that petrification basically turned to stone. And um, that's a really interesting theory on that. I've been hearing more and more about it. So now I'm more of a believer. I'm not saying I'm a believer, but I am more of a believer in giants that are in stone and old trees that are as hard as rock, things like that, because it kind of falls in that line with Sodom and Gomorrah and basically how God just petrified everything instantly. So it makes it a really fun theory and I, I enjoy that. Hey, 
I mean, I'm reading the comments and some people are saying that that was just a boar with the sun behind it. And like the comment said on there, it was just a boar with heaps of something behind it. But that looked way too much like a dinosaur. I'll pop up an image of the dinosaur that I thought it looked like the most. It, it just makes me wonder, you know, how do they have that image? Is it a boar? It could very well be. It could be. But it looked just like a dinosaur. It looks just like how we depict dinosaurs today. So that's pretty crazy. I don't know where this is exactly. I'm reading the comments and a lot of people are saying in this area dinosaur bones have been found all over the place. And I see that there's some people saying that those carvings weren't done until a later date just for fun. But I think those are genuine. Those look like old carvings. It's just really crazy on how much that looks like a dinosaur. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this almost every day. And it'd be awesome to see you come back again tomorrow. Shit's getting weird. Part infinity. A well-preserved copy of the Book of the Dead was just uncovered in Egypt. Written as a guidebook to the afterlife, the Book of the Dead contains ancient rituals for the living to perform in order to help the deceased on their journeys to their deities. This copy was written on a papyrus scroll that is over 42 feet long. Along with the Book of the Dead, the Egyptian government says archaeologists have uncovered ornaments, amulets, and decorations that date back to the New Kingdom period of the pharaohs. <sighs> That's interesting. I am curious and going to keep a lookout on this news because I am interested in this Book of the Dead. I have heard about it uh, a, a recently, but this is my first video actually watching it and seeing the book itself. That's really interesting and it makes me wonder, how did they get that information to share to people? Like, how do you know how to guide someone through death? Like, how do you know that? So it's a very interesting thing. I wonder what all it says. I'd be extremely interested in knowing what that whole scroll says. I would sit down and read that for sure because that's just fascinating to me. If you want to know what this liquid does, uh, you can have a look at it in the lab. When you have bigger amounts of it, it looks like this. It's a liquid crystal. This liquid is self-organizing physically. And this, at the moment, is sleeping. It's not aware of being observed. It's quiet. Sometimes when it doesn't like to be observed, it might jump out of the pot straight into your face. If you have two of those in one room, get them five meters close to each other, they stare at each other, then they decide that they want to be united, and then they start to pull. It's like magnetism, but it's intelligent. And when they realize that you hold them within the vessel, and they cannot ex escape, they get angry, and start to shake, to shake the vessel, and try to break through the wall. Because they know once they are through, they can flow over the ground and, and unite to a bigger unit. This is something you can just observe in the lab. And especially this, this liquid was extracted from those black stones. Um, this is uh, World War II uh, leftovers. We found them in an underground facility in Bavaria, half a ton of it. So we can imagine that the SS processed quite a bit of this. And I guess that the guys found also the technology to extract the oil from it must have been there in written form because they did it in the lab successfully. If you look at those stones, you have a brief history of uh, things reported out of former times you have. If you look at H.P. Lovecraft, the descriptions of uh, the black magic communities in Eastern Europe, they had kind of sculptures out of this black oil schist. And once a year, they went there slaughtering little babies to get the demons out of the stone, uh, sacrificing little children to communicate and get the service from the demons. This is one thing mentioned. If you go back in history, 
Um, you find them in the Kaaba in Mecca. The same form of phallus-shaped structure that is described in Vedic script as Shiva's Linga, that is described in this uh, Lovecraft script. A fragment of it is part of a uh, central part of the cuts that are apparently legal. Yeah, they are talking about weapons that are hidden somewhere in the civil domain. Everybody is dealing with them, everybody is using them, and one of them is the microwave. Microwave is used for mobile phones, it's used for smart meters, it's used for uh, wireless LAN connections, and we're surrounded by um, microwaves, and they enter our body, and we think this is just a side effect of technical applications. But NASA classifies microwaves as a non-lethal weapon that is apparently legal. And um, they also name the uh, effect of those weapons. It's behavioral performance decrements, sizes, gross alteration in brain function, uh, 30, 30 to 100% increase in brain flow, in, in, in blood flow in the brain, and uh, also lethal effects that come over the time. So this is weapons brought out on mankind that NASA is opening, openly talking about, just projecting it in the paper to the future. And we are falling for this. We, we think it's something clever to have a mobile on your head half, half of the day. Um, what they also have, and uh, this is something that refers to Kara's work, is uh, explosive microdust that can, that can be intelligently moved through the air to certain points, to certain areas. You can up concentrate it and form, form an explosive lens. And it can, can also go intentionally into human beings to kill them from inside. They say that it's, it's clever enough, the system, to go into underground facilities with the dust, with the explosive dust, to, um, to access people who are hiding down there. Um, so this is basically this NASA document that is giving a kind of abstract picture what could be airborne in the future. Or maybe because of the future is now, could be airborne, airborne already today. That was a long-winded video. I find it interesting. I would have liked to have heard a little bit more about this black goo, and I think I'll do a little bit more research on it because that's very fascinating that it's such a reactive and sentient material. I do not believe it. There was no video evidence of them trying to connect to each other. There was no video evidence of the black goo waking up and trying to leech onto someone's face. Like, basically, he's talking about a symbiotic goo like Venom from Spider-Man. So, it's very interesting. I would like to see it a little bit more, but I think it's a little bit fake. And as far as the smart dust goes, I do believe that smart dust could be a thing. I don't think it's actually dust. It's just um, nanotechnology, like little drones that are just super, super, super tiny. I do believe that that could be a thing. And with cloud seeding and doing all that, that's a great way to drop those smart dusts into the atmosphere for us to collect. I, I definitely see something like that happening because it could be utilized in so many ways. Uh, you could probably use smart dust for radar location and all different kinds of things. It's just a matter of time and how it's controlled and how it's used. So we'll see. Did a guy on TikTok who is in space just discover a whole new landmass? Let's get into it. This is Spaceman EDU, and he is currently on, I guess, what, the space station, right? And he said that someone said the Earth was flat, so he wanted to prove that it was flat. Now, I have a couple things here that I would like to question, and truly, honestly, I believe everybody should be questioning this. One of the debates and debunks when it comes to flat and sphere is the fact that people use fisheye lens. Now, if you want to speak truth, then the question being, why do you have a fisheye lens, okay? You can clearly see in your video when you move around the fisheye lens being used. We all want to come to the truth here, then we got to be under percent honest okay you have curvature in all of your things now not everybody may see it but i am a graphic designer so i see the minute you can clearly see the curvature in everything around you 
literally. Do you see the amount of space here compared to the amount of space here between the wall and that piece of metal? This is already showing you a line of curvature. So that means that you are seeing a minute curvature. Even go over here and look at this. If you can't, if you don't have the eyes to see, if you haven't been looking, you're not going to see it. But there is a slight curvature to the things in the video. So yes, explain this then. Let's talk about the land mass here, okay? So we can clearly see that this is the Earth, right? And it, we all understand how a sphere works, so we can clearly see the size of it. So why in the world is there a land mass that covers so much curvature in this panel right here? Do you see it? Like, really, guys, do you not see how big this land mass is? Okay, y'all gonna sit there and tell me what this is just a perception of it? Look, I'm okay. Look, see the curve there? Do you see the curve there? So, do you not see this land mass covering a quarter of this? Okay, so please, please, spaceman, please EDU me right now. What is this land mass? Again, very large land mass. Again, curvature of the metal, curvature of the metal clear curvature of the metal which you can distinctly see by the top space being bigger gapped in the the smaller space right here having a smaller gap okay so there's curvature and a huge land mass again dude what's this land mass that was not the time to be deceitful in your ways large ass land mass okay and curvature in your metal metal which does not curve so if you're going to speak the truth, then you've got to remove the fish eye lens. You do not come onto this platform and fool people this way. When you do, you meet people like me. Okay. Hi. What is this land mass? If someone is up there, if you are clearly up there, if you are clearly a real person, then you will tell me what this land mass is. Please tell me what land mass is like the quarter the size of the earth. Because again, clearly you can see the curvature, the top and the bottom of the earth. You can clearly see that this land mass is this land mass is huge. So I would really like to know if you really are a real person, then what in the land mass is this land mass? Please let me know. Educate us, EDU. I'm not going to like make extreme speculations, but one, I think that's not a fisheye lens. I think that's a wide angle lens that they use um, in space. And also... As far as that landmass goes, I'm not like super huge on geography, but I know a little bit of it, at least for continents. That looks like Australia to me. I know I have some people from Australia in my subscription feed. If that's Australia. Please leave a comment down below confirming it. If it's not, let me know. Hey, that's not Australia. You're crazy. But that kind of looks like Australia to me. What do you guys think? Show us how you levitate. Yes, yoga balance is what I call it. Yoga balance. All righty, well, give us, give us a look. He's going through something here. I'm not quite sure. I think, I think he's getting, I think he's getting in the, in the, in the mood. All right, gonna get up. Nice. All righty, sir. Now he's gonna levitate. Uh-oh. Okay. I'll back away. Alrighty, Michael, I want you to check the feet. Oh my goodness! I mean, if only it was that easy. Hold on, let me, let me, let me try. I think I have all the proper equipment to try this. Let me give it a shot. didn't work to be honest i think that this guy if you notice he's sitting on a gravel patch probably because he's got some kind of balancing weight under the gravel that's connected to his stick i think this is just a trick of the eye stage performance 
So all of the thousands of astronauts for 60 years are lying. Well, according, according to astronomy.com, only 667 people have journeyed to a, you know, an altitude of 50 miles, which is nothing. That's not space. 24 have been to the moon and 12 have actually walked on it. Here's something I want you just to think about, okay? Without judgment, just think about this. The moon is 238,000 miles away, right? Have you heard of something called the Van Allen Belt? It's a zone of energetic charged particles, most of which originate from the solar wind, okay? This is a belt that is a round. This is in between us and the moon. So it goes us, the Van Allen Belt, and the moon. The Van Allen Belt starts at about 400 miles and goes to 36,000 miles. This is pretty close, way, way more close compared to the moon. Do you know how hot it gets at this level? Okay, the regions in the Van Allen Belt go from 2,000 to 20,000 Kelvin. Well, what's Kelvin? 2,000 Kelvin equals 3,100 degrees. 20,000 Kelvin equals 35,000 degrees. 35,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Are you still with me? The Eagle Lunar Module used in the Apollo program was built mostly and completely of aluminum. So you're telling me that the aluminum in the ship alone can stand the 35,000 degree temperature? when the space shuttle thermal protection system can only withstand 3,000 degrees. Okay, so the, the lowest number in the Van Allen belt will melt the thermal protection system. So you're telling me that this shuttle was able to traverse 30,000 miles of temperatures up to 35,000 degrees and still be able to make it to the moon, which is still over 200,000 miles away. The entry orbiter itself is made of reinforced carbon. Reinforced carbon melts at 3,600 degrees. Its boiling point is at 4,200 degrees. And the Van Allen belt reaches 35,000 degrees. So they would have to go through a radiation belt that would melt them, yet they had somehow a way to make it to the moon and then were able to transmit a viable signal through this Van Allen belt that's 30,000 miles wide with temperatures up to 35,000 degrees. And you're telling me back in 1960, we could watch that television live without any interruption? And here I am losing my signal every time a, a plane flies over me. Oh, but it's because they have the satellites in space, right? So in 1960, they had the satellite that could beam through the Van Allen belt, which is at 600 miles up. Yet the moon which is another 200 and something thousand miles away, the ship was able to make it through 35,000 degrees of temperature when it's boiling point just for it's the carbon within it is only 4,200 degrees. You're telling me that these thousands of astronauts went and then lied. Actually, no, 24 went to the moon and only 12 walked on it. Do you know how easy it is to control 24 people, especially when you have a lot of money to do it? Yeah. We totally went to the moon. Totally. Go ahead and think on what I said without any judgment in your mind. And you tell me how the ship of NASA's just survived a 35,000 degree Van Allen belt. There is no getting through Allen. None. There's no getting through it. No way. Not even the signal. We did not have the technology back then to get that signal through that Van Allen belt. Plain and simple. Go back to NASA and ask them to explain that one. Hey, I mean, she's bringing up some good points, and I have a couple of things to say about this as well that kind of just, like, brings theories and conspiracies to mind. It, it kind of makes me think of, like, the firmament in a way. Like, if there really is this belt up there, uh, then that's kind of its own formation of the firmament. But uh, I, I don't... The thing that I have the biggest problem with these conspiracies are kind of in hand-to-hand -hand conversation as to what do you believe in. You don't believe that we went to the moon, but you believe what scientists say about the Van Allen belt. It, it just makes me wonder, you know, what should we really believe in? Because there's scientists that say, hey, there's a Van Allen belt up there. And those same scientists, or a number of them same scientists, put a spacecraft up in space and landed it on the moon. So it just makes me wonder, you know, where should you fall in line if you don't believe in certain aspects of science and space, but do believe in other aspects of science of space? I, I just don't know. Let me know what you guys think and your concept of thinking on as far as space being fake and or believing in other sciences to accommodate for 
that, if that makes any sense. I know that's kind of jambly and jumbly and it's all over the place. The future is here. It's now. You're living in it. These are desktop fusion reactors. They appear really complex, but they're deceptively simple. When you force two atoms together, energy comes out. Those are just really fancy plasma balls, like the ones you have when you're a kid. But instead of the plasma going all over the place, we trap it around those wires. The top video is a plastic pin in zero G with a water droplet orbiting around the charge around the pin. Same concept. It looks like the shape of an atom for a very important reason. Every magnetic phenomenon has an electric component. For example, Tesla's use magnetic braking. The electrical component of that magnetic field recharges the battery. The magnetic field of a sphere looks like that. When two of those come together, you can imagine those bands popping and you get an energy release like we see on the sun. Fusion reactors harvest the excess that's released. That particular shape is called vector equilibrium. All the angles in that shape point to the core and stabilize it. It's the only shape that can focus and stabilize like that. If you look at cymatics, the shape kind of breathes. It's like the frame rate of an atom. But the real secret comes from containing phi, that number, within pi of the circle. Conceptually, you're containing two infinite numbers within a finite container. So if you keep containing energy within a circle, it materializes into an atom. Atom's not really there, it's really fast energy. To us, the particle appears solid. But if you're trying to explain it, the energy's like frozen in the orbital. That's why the drawings look like that. When you do this enough, that shape scales and you can get bigger particles and even molecules like that one. That's real. You can make this shape with just circles. So just the interaction of circles with energy creates all of the stuff. I'm not saying that that is a fusion reactor prop device. It could very well be a real fusion reactor. But uh, I do know that they make fusion reactor prop devices that are like basically LED lights. I kind of want to get one to sit either over there or sit right there. I think that would be really cool. All right, guys, I'm going to end the video there. And with that being said, have a good day.